All right, video good. Let me get that going. All right, let's start her up. Here we go, folks. Well, why isn't it? <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Come Not on. Not this again. Yes. Okay, Dopper Tom, you there? Okay, here we go. <coughs> Hopefully we'll start this. Come on. Recorded live. GC Community Chat, show number 202. Hello, I'm Dave Cooper, known as Dave AC Online, and you're listening to GC Community Chat with your host, Kerry Partin. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to GC Community Chat. I'm your host, Kerry, and joining me tonight is Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc, Dr. Tom Iwinski, and Derek Parton. This show is dedicated to you, the residents and businesses of Garden City, as well as the surrounding communities. Remember, we're working hard to promote our community and yours. Well, hello again, and thanks for joining us tonight for another episode of GC Community Chat. It's Thursday. June the 5th, and yes, this is show number 202. Remember, no one is more com committed to the businesses and residents in GC Community Chat. If you would like to promote your business or organization or just give a shout-out to your community, then GC Community Chat is here for you. <clears throat> we are all about promoting our community and yours. <clears throat> let me clear my throat. All right, let me introduce my co-hosts back joining us after being off last week sick. Our very own Wayne County Commissioner, Richard LeBlanc. Richard, how you doing? You feeling better? Better. Not good. 100% yet, but I'm better. Good, good. Glad to be here. And our resident weatherman who has uh, given us a beautiful day today here in Garden City, Mr. Doppler, Tom Iwinski. Tom, how you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Good. I'm enjoying this nice weather. Beautiful weather. We'll get to you in a little bit. Listen, if you want to join the conversation tonight, just head over to TalkShoe.com and search for Call ID 82757. That takes you right to our main show page. Once you're there, uh, just click on the large Join Now button, and you'll be able to uh, create a free account or sign in for free. And uh, that will take you right to our chat room where you can listen uh, to the show, type your questions and comments at the bottom of the page, and you'll find our phone number and show ID there as well. Now to call in, the number is 1-724-444-7444. And you're going to enter the call ID 82757, followed by the pound sign when you're prompted. Now, just follow the prompts, and you'll be all set. Now, some of you may have to call in more than once due to the heavy traffic, and we do apologize in advance. Keep trying, and we hope to talk with you soon. You can always text your questions or comments to us at 734-788-9319. Okay, last week we started a new segment called Gardening in Two Minutes. Joey and Holly Baird a couple from Wisconsin who do several gardening videos on YouTube and also have a digital magazine, which you can find over on their website at www.thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, uh, had contacted us to see if we would be interested in running a two-minute segment for our listeners on gardening tips and ideas. We figured, uh, what the heck, any information we can pass along to the community of our listeners uh, would be a public service, and uh, that's what we're here, that's what it's all about. So uh, with their second installment, here is Joey and Baird. Joey and Holly.
This is gardening in two minutes. Mulch is an important aspect of gardening for many reasons. Two is it controls and retains the moisture in the soil. And it also suppresses weed. Now there's many different choices when it comes to the type of mulch that you can use in your garden, raised bed or flower bed. We'll discuss a few of them. Straw can be one of those mulches. Straw is the byproduct in the farming industry of wheat. Now there are other forms of straw. You do not want to get straw and hay confused. Straw is the byproduct of a grain. Hay is the grasses that are intentionally grown, mowed, and fed to cattle. They can, can contain many weed seeds, so we want to stick with straw as a mulch. We also have grass clippings. Now you can take grass clippings from your yard. You want to make sure that they're not, your yard hasn't been treated with anything before you put them around your plants. Or you can use the grass, you can spread it around, you can also let it dry out. You want to let it dry out before you put it around your plants. By allowing it to dry out, you will slow down the compost process because if you put wet grass around your plants, they will begin, it'll begin to get hot. It'll begin to get hot and begin to break down. That's not good. Wood chips can be controversial based on who you speak to. The Back to Eden method is solely wood chip related. By placing wood chips in the area that you're going to grow and the wood chips break down over time, enriching the soil and bringing in a lot of worms and other micronutrients into that soil. Then there's also paper. That's something that you can use. You can use shredded paper from your home or office. People feel that it's controversial because because of the ink that is used to on paper and the bleaching process of the paper, but it is something that you can use and you may have an abundance of that can be cheaply done around your garden. You do want to water it over it when you, once you do put it out so that it doesn't blow away and it allows to sink down into the, the base of the plant. And leaves in the fall, we are all inundated with leaves. They make great mulch. So build you a giant leaf compost pile in the fall and in the spring you can dig that compost pile out because in <coughs> some northern climates those leaves don't break down very rapidly and you you can use that as a great mulch and as it breaks down in the garden it neutralizes the soil and you can have that mulch to retain moisture and reap suppress weeds. For more information on mulch, our weekly video productions, as well as our free downloadable quarterly magazine, you can find all that information at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. For gardening in two minutes, I'm Joy Bear. And I'm Holly Bear. All right. Thank you, Joy and Holly. We'll talk to you next week. All right, tonight I've been waiting since August of last year when he was on the show with several other local leaders, and tonight he has taken the time to join us here in studio. Senator Glenn Anderson will be here shortly. Also, Richard, I think you might have a few things that you might want to say tonight and share with the listeners. Yeah, a few. Yep. Seeing as you've been absent, tardy, absent. Only, only physically <laughs> absent. That's true. You were in the chat room last I've week. I've been tuned in, though. Barely, yeah. yeah. And uh, we'll have a few event announcements and much more, so I uh, hope you'll stick around. Okay, before we get to uh, Tom, uh, last week our show was all about the veterans. I just wanted to mention two very important events that are coming up. Uh, first, the veterans hiring event. Uh, that's going to be Monday, June the 9th uh, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's going to be at the Historical Hotel St. Regis in the New Center area. 3071 West Grand Boulevard in Detroit. Um, they're going to have free parking available four blocks away at 253 East Milwaukee Street, and that's in Detroit with a shuttle to the hotel. And they're asking veterans to bring your DD-214 or VA health card state ID, uh, proper interview attire, no jeans and no sneakers, please, and have your resumes handy. So that's pretty important. Also, the second event uh, that's really going to be a big one is uh, Diane uh, Webb. She's the uh, Wayne County Commissioner, 8th District. She's having her third annual Veterans, Families, and Caretakers event. That's going to be Tuesday, um, June 17th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Doors open at 4.30 p.m. It's going to be held at the VFW Post 7546. And that is on uh, 6828 Waverly in Dearborn Heights. Now, over 30 government and nonprofit veterans agencies will be in attendance to provide assistance with education and employment. They're also going to have the veterans photo ID cards available for those interested. So, you got to bring either, oh, you got to bring your driver's license and a copy of your DD-214 if you're interested. Keynote speakers will be uh, Wayne County Director of Veteran Services. And Veterans Community Action Team, Troy Sheline, he was on our show last week. And 11th District State Representative, uh, David Kanisik, will also be there. <clears throat> Light food and refreshments 
will be served and prizes raffled. The event is free. Uh, for more information, contact Lisa Childs at 313-224-0930. So hope you can make it out there. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, remember, this show is always recorded, and they will be uploaded to our main show page over on TalkShoe.com. Just search for show ID 82757, and all 202 shows will be over there for you to check out at your convenience. And then, as always, we will be continuing to upload our latest show to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gcchat. And you can also find us over on iTunes at uh, GC Community Chat. Just subscribe while you're over there. That way you won't miss any. So no matter what, we have you covered, and we thank you all for listening and your support. All right, let's get to uh, Tom with a brief check of the weather, and uh, then we'll introduce our guests for tonight. Okay, let's do a check on weather with Doppler Tom. Let's see what he has in store for the rest of this week and the weekend coming up. Tom, take it away. Hey, Tom, beautiful day today, wonderful day. Yeah, I didn't see a, few, I didn't see a whole lot of clouds. I don't even know if I spotted one out there. It was such a nice day out there. No. But, uh, yes, very nice day. We've seen some rain this week. This is how the pattern usually has been going over the last few weeks. We see, we see a little bit of rain on a few days and then a lot more on nicer days to follow. And that's pretty much going to be the case. So the rest of tonight out there, we're going to be pretty clear out there. Temperatures are going to fall into the lower 50s, so not a – pretty comfortable out there and then as we head into tomorrow again a lot of sunshine out there and uh, those temperatures again will be a little bit uh, milder as well we'll probably get into the upper 70s so that's uh, going to be very comfortable out there and then as we get to the weekend I think overall the weekend is going to be a good weekend I think Saturday will be better than Sunday but uh, Saturday again we'll see a lot of sunshine out there temperatures will be in the lower 80s so if you have any uh, outdoor plans that's uh, a great day to do that and then on Sunday, I don't think it's going to be a complete washout, but uh, we'll probably see some on and off rain throughout the day on Sunday, and a little bit uh, a little bit cooler temperatures. Back will won't be back into the mid 70s. So uh, if you have any big big plans, I would do it on Saturday more than Sunday. But Sunday will oh, well, it's not going to be a complete washout, but it still will be a good day as well. And then as we get into next week, again all of early next week, Monday, Tuesday. And into Wednesday, probably as well, will be a, a lot of sunshine, a few clouds out there. Temperatures aren't going to be too warm as well. We'll probably be in the low to mid 70s. So that's going to be very comfortable. And then we'll see a little bit of rain in the midweek again. And then uh, as we get into later next week, we'll start warming up into the lower 80s with some uh, mix of sun and clouds. So pretty quiet pattern. We'll see a little bit of rain here and there, but nothing major um, to uh, speak of. So that's some great news. But uh, is all of that big, guaranteed? Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Is all of that guaranteed? Everything you just said? <laughs> oh yeah, every single segment is guaranteed. All right, <laughs> all right proceed. <laughs> now to conclude with my update, uh, uh, expanding out uh, nationally, uh, the biggest story out there right now is uh, severe weather. Severe weather has been ongoing uh, over the na- over the last few days across much of the northern plains, the central plains, and the southeastern United States. We're seeing a lot of rain a lot of uh, damaging winds and a lot of uh, hail and even some tornadoes. So that's uh, been an ongoing threat all this week, and it's going to continue over the next few days as well. So uh, that's pretty much the weather. The central United States is staying uh, stormy out there. The west is staying hot and dry, which is not good news, especially the southwest <coughs> out there. And uh, the, new, the eastern United States is okay now, but it will see some rain over the weekend. So if you're going to be in the central United States, keep tuned to that weather because it's very, very busy out there. But here... Enjoy the weekend because it's going to be pretty good out there. But that's pretty much the weather out there. Uh, uh, back to you, Terry. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Still got your website up, right? Yeah. The reason why I did not mention my website is because we're going into I'm going into a reconstruction process with it. I'm going to re-release oh. it. Oh. Uh, first, I stuff with a uh, whole new graphics and uh, much of, and a very uh, mobile-friendly uh, website. So it's going to be like an app. So oh, cool. So stay tuned for that. All right. Yeah, we'll look for that. All right. Well, at this time, I'd like to introduce our special guest. From 1991 to 2000, he served on the Westland City Council. From 2000 to 2006, he served in the Michigan House of Representatives. And in 2006, he was elected to the Michigan State Senate, District 6. And in 2010, he was reelected to serve a second term in the State Senate. He lives right next door in our neighboring city of Westland. 
State Senator Glenn Anderson. Welcome back to the show, Senator. Good evening. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. That so guy that you're get... describing sound like he must be pretty old or been in office all those years. He's very old. <laughs> I was wondering, did Known I get... him a long time. Started very young, I did have I get to tell a... everyone. get all that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Senator, this is your second and final term. Uh, do you find a little uh, find it a little bittersweet? Oh, somewhat, uh, somewhat. Uh, you know, even were there, uh, if there weren't uh, term limits, I think that would probably, uh, after maybe one more term, I'd be ready to leave anyway. So, mm -hmm. I, I, I think the vast majority of the people, I think, would find after a period of time they'd want to move on to a new challenge anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, that's certainly the situation I find myself in. I might, if I had the opportunity, if it weren't for that little little uh, prohibition in the uh, Constitution, right. I, I, I <laughs> might run again. But, uh, but I, I certainly uh, enjoy it. I've enjoyed what I've done. I uh, think I've been able to, to make a difference um, mm -hmm. for people's lives and in people's lives in Michigan, hopefully make a few things better. Well, that's the main thing. You know, you feel good about yourself. You know, you did the job and to the best of your ability, right? Exactly. Uh, now, the 6th District, uh, which is Garden City, Livonia, Redford Township, and Westland, is going to become the new 5th District due to restructuring, re, uh, uh, which will include Dearborn Heights, Garden City, Inkster, Redford Township, and a portion of Northwest Detroit. Do you think that this is going to uh, present quite a challenge to whoever is elected? I think it will. The diversity of the uh, in, in the new composition of the district uh, is going to be quite a bit different for a successor. Uh, and I actually have three. There will be three new senators coming in. That uh, right. well, two, two, and one uh, probably returning member mm -hmm. that'll have portions of my district. And uh, the uh, Redford, as you mentioned, the Redford in, uh, uh, portion in the Garden City portion go with uh, the Durban Heights and, and, uh, and the northwest area of Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, the Westland portion goes with another district that's currently represented by Hoon Young Hopgood, who currently represents Taylor and Romulus. And I think his district currently uh, goes all the way to the river, uh, uh, to the Detroit River. And then it's really confusing, isn't it's it? It's very confusing <laughs> for people. And yeah, by the time people get used to it, it changes It'll change again. again. Yep, exactly. exactly. So it's all triggered, of course, by the uh, uh, every time there's a new census every 10 years. And then the year after that, they start drawing new districts based yeah, on the shift in population. It. Right. And, uh, and then the last component, the last uh, Senate uh, district, will be one that uh, will be taking in the Livonia portion of my district. So, right, right. And that'll go with the Canton, Plymouth, Northville, Northville Township <laughs> and that. So it's, it's uh, well, you be need an a adjustment. Real scorecard, don't you, Richard? <laughs> it, sometimes it's a challenge to figure out how they come up with those boundaries. It yes. is. It is, really. I know the senator and I have both, during our careers within the legislature, have tried to persuade uh, consideration of acts that would allow the voters more of a say in this, uh, you know, put it to the, put it to an independent entity. But that takes, of course, a change in the Constitution, and neither of us could ever get support. Well, it's always as as Richard knows, whoever's in power wants right. to wants to continue to use the drawing of uh, the district lines to favor those in, in their party. party. Right. right, and and it's happened by Democrats and Republicans both, uh, sure. and uh, and and they just are resistant to any change in that process. But mm -hmm. it really does a disservice to the voter. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree there. All right, let's get your thoughts on a couple of hot topics. Uh, Detroit's grand bargain. Uh, State Senate approves a $195 million aid package to help ease the cuts of pensioners and to save the DIA artwork from sale. Uh, but missing from that package was a bill that would have prohibited the DIA from seeking a renewal of a millage to support the museum or asking for a new one. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I, I had a little bit of an issue about that. Uh, Would you like to see that bill in there? I Well, part of me... You know, yes, and the other side says no because the voters can decide that when that, that comes up again. I think right. there's only a few years left on that, mm -hmm. uh, as I recall. I think maybe four or five more years left on it. And uh, and I, I, I believe that voters can decide uh, for themselves. This yeah. basically would say that, uh, that a, the communities or the counties that are part of that right now can't even vote on it, can't mm -hmm. renew it. They can't. And so I... You know, I realize, too, that where we're living, you know, we're under the shadow of Detroit in so many ways, mm -hmm. uh, good and bad. And uh, and so 
the problem that I had with it from the very beginning and when they uh, actually did the uh, the one for the zoo, mm-hmm. uh, which sort of started the whole yeah. thing rolling. Yep. I'm very, I love the zoo, <laughs> love taking my kids to the zoo, but I didn't, yeah. I, the, the putting it as a millage, I think was a, a questionable action. I voted against it in the Senate. At yeah. that we time. were the only two Democrats to vote against and it. And believe really? me, me we, in the house and him in the Senate. We got that right? quite we got a bit of heat. Flack. Flack, yeah. I can imagine. I stand by it to yeah. this day regarding the DIA. And well, the I DIA. support both of you on that. I, I agree. I mean, I, I just thought it was ridiculous too. But well, it's uh, uh, the problem is is sometimes, as Richard knows, and and you know too, Carrie, that uh, they go to where it's e- the, where they believe it's easiest to get more money. And uh, yeah. and and in and, and this situation with Wayne County and the the size of Detroit, uh, they they tend to be able to. Uh, folks out, the numbers are much larger for that metropolis than all of our small communities. But when you add all of our communities together, Mm -hmm. we exceed Detroit in population, all the surrounding communities around Detroit, uh, when you add it all up. Uh, So, but it it tends to, in an election like that, uh, I I just don't think that's the best place to go for the money, really. Uh, But I, like I said, I, I decided that it was a one of the problems uh, that 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 didn't even we didn't even have to vote on that issue because in committee it never right. made it out into onto the floor. But uh, but I I had I had mixed feelings about it because I do believe in giving voters the right to make a decision themselves, and I think they would have made the right decision. So, do you really think that part of that hundred ninety five million dollar aid should have included the DIA? Then I mean, you you agree with that then? Well, yeah, I mean, because I really have, you know, mixed. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, there were so many pieces to this puzzle, uh-huh. and uh, as it was explained to us, and we had everyone from the mayor, Kevin Orr was sitting next to me in the caucus. Mm-hmm. Incredible person. Uh, I'm, I'm very yeah. impressed with him. Yeah, yeah he uh, seems that, really... That he, he was so, uh, uh, I, I guess, so... Uh, just down to earth, he sat mm-hmm. down next to me and He's he said, do you, do you mind yeah. if I sit here? Very yeah. well read, too, and very well. Ex- extremely bright, answered yeah. questions just just as quick as they were popped to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and good answers, good solid answers. And when they, they he realized there's still a problem, an outstanding problem mm-hmm. uh, going forth into the future, uh, he says, we're working on that. Mm-hmm. And he would say, you know, he would be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. I asked about the footprint of the city of Detroit, and I know Mayor Bing had uh, tried to put forth a program to reduce the footprint of Detroit, to bring it in line with the population, oh. to have greater density in the population. Okay. And he said, that's probably about a 20-year process. And Mayor Duggan the other day was in our caucus, and he said, <laughs> he said, you know, realistically, politically, you know, he says, think about your grandmother and your grandfather or one or the other or both Mm -hmm. Uh, your uh, moms that are in their 70s and 80s that have lived in a home for 50, 60 years or longer. It's not too easy to get them out of the home and get them willing to accept a change and move them in closer to a more compact community. Mm -hmm. And Detroit, though, has to do something like that because they can't continue to support uh, a city with a footprint that it that it had in the 60s right. when the population is what one third or even l- less exactly. than a third of what it was at that time yeah yeah and uh, so he was very honest very forthcoming so uh, do you see uh kevin Orr leaving in september whenever he's due to leave i i'm i think it's probably going to happen but there's still going to with this plan that was approved there's going to be an oversight commission right and uh they have pretty sweeping powers the uh, but Mayor Duggan says he believes they can meet the targets that are in that. To it's going to be a financial manager, if I'm not absolutely. mistaken. Absolutely, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I voted for those bills. And and uh, in coming with that, though, I think we it's both both got to be a carrot and a stick uh, type right, approach. Right. But I do believe that we'll see Detroit. I think it's it's the talk of the country right now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's for positive reasons, not so much negative reasons like it that's has true. been in our lifetime. That's true. I think the only negative thing is all the recalls that GM's been having. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a whole nother issue. I mean, the investment in Detroit, they uh, Mayor Duggan was saying, you know, there's capital waiting to be invested in Detroit. As yes. soon as this, uh, the bankruptcy issue is behind us mm-hmm. and they're on the path and they're basically locked into a, to a, uh, uh, a solid future 
financially that the money is going to start being I like Mayor quadruple. Duggan. Oh, I, mean, I think he's doing I mean, it. I think this guy is going to be awesome. Yeah, I do, uh, too. He's exactly what Detroit needs, I think. And I guess I was sort of surprised, too, that the reaction by the Detroit delegation in our caucus, mm -hmm. uh, how they have now embraced him because they're seeing things happening in Detroit right. that haven't happened in their lifetime. Well, that's you know, how you, you know, that's how you, you get respect. You get results. You get things done, right? Exactly. I mean, that's what you got to do. He says what he's going to do, and he does it. Yeah, I've known Mike Duggan since, uh, he, actually, I think since he was prosecuting attorney uh, oh, wow. for Wayne okay. County ages ago. So you go back. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, he, I, I said, hello, Mayor. I, first, I said, hello, Mike, <laughs> when I walked into the caucus room. <laughs> And he said, and I said, sorry, sorry, mayor. And he says, no, it's still Mike. Good, good. So that yeah. just, he, he seems like a real down to earth guy, is. too. And previous two mayors would come into the caucus mm -hmm. with an entourage of oh, um, yeah. three to five security guards surrounding them, packing weapons and with the oh earplugs on and everything you'd think it was the president showing up <laughs> and uh and mike duggan's in there going from caucus yeah. room to caucus room talking to people without a drives seat. itself and yeah. and, and that too from what i hear yeah. i mean i you know it's down to earth yeah I very say. very down to earth well, that's great all right well let's move on and let's talk about another huge issue and that's the roads this is probably the biggest single topic that i hear people talking about every day now that uh they want the roads fixed, but they don't want to pay more gas taxes to do it. The, uh, oh, you've Michigan, been talking to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the Michigan House already passed a gas tax increase, and the Senate's looking at one that is even bigger from what I understand. Is this really what your constituents want? Well, uh, Carrie, back it up just a little bit. I know Richard. Uh, Richard uh, is one of those that wants you and I to pay it, not him. That's yeah, it. Right. He's not okay at all. with that. Yeah, not at all. Uh, the legislature, without your assistance or mine, took more money from people than at any time in the history of this state in 2011. Uh, they should use some of that money with first. The, yeah, it's, all the taxes yeah. that were increased under the current governor, it really did. Uh, right. Well, we're, we're at 59 cents now, and, and California is 71 cents. Uh, could we actually surpass California, you think? Well, we possibly could. I did a quick calculation the other day based on, <coughs> right now, the, the uh, proposal that uh, the majority leader in the Senate uh, the, for the Republicans, uh, Randy Richardville, mm -hmm. uh, put forth a proposal that would be 15 and a half cents, or 15 and a half percent instead of 19 cents on a gallon as it currently is. And he's talking about going 15.5 percent. So, to do a little quick math, you know that's uh, what 30 cents on four dollars a gallon. 60. Uh, 60 cents. 60. And, cents. and 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 we're and already I, paying top dollar right now for God's sake yeah. because of the what summer blend now supposedly. Well, they're, they're saying it. yeah, exactly. They're they're <laughs> they're saying that they would take the 19 cents away and uh, but but this this increase after when this runs its course and gets to the maximum. I think people would just basically, they'd have to ride bicycles. Well, and plus, <laughs> well, it's just, plus, with the sales tax yeah. that our state charges, we would be number one in the, in the country. Yes, we would surpass it's, California. So I, I've really made it one. known that I'm not supporting that. I mean, I know there's got to be something in the mixture probably that we're going to have to absorb some of the cost, but that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's putting all your eggs in one basket and saying we're going to stick it to the motorist, and I'm not. You know, not, not to mention it. what it's going to do for tourism. That and every every food product. And, and, and right. food, exactly. Yeah. It's ridiculous. There's yeah. no way. It has a compounding effect. I know members, uh, some of the members of my caucus said they would never consider a sales tax. And that's uh, in consideration. It's in, in play somewhat. I don't know if it has enough support. I don't believe it probably does have enough to do that instead of the gas tax. But, I, but I'm, as I said before, I'm certainly not supporting that large of an uh, increase in the sales or in the uh, gas tax. But to me, uh, from what I'm hearing from a lot of people, they'd be much easier uh, to accept the uh, a one cent increase in sales tax as long as it was constitutionally dedicated to transportation. And you would go along with that? Well, I would. I would certainly consider that. But there's some other things that are in play that are not that have not been settled yet. Mm -hmm. One of the things they haven't been talking to us about preservation of our roads, about weight limits. They don't want to talk about weight limits. That's something that we've talked and, about on the show before. We have got to have a serious discussion about weight limits. Yeah, we're they the have highest, the fines. Yeah, we're the highest in the country. The enforcement is not there where it should be, mm -hmm. and uh, 
drive by every way station in the state, yeah. and and I <laughs> bet you'll find 99% of them closed. Yep, yep. And, I have. And the director, I asked him, I put, asked, put it to him point blank recently at a meeting. I said, how do you catch these overweight trucks, and how do you have proper enforcement with closing down all these way stations? He said, well, we have rolling enforcement. That we have a car, a car that's carrying portable scales, yeah. Motor and then, yeah. and, and then he, then yeah. he said that we can't issue tickets with those though. We have to route <laughs> them to a stationary way because oh the courts God. will not find them. So what I mean, so you're taking an officer off the road now for to have to not only weigh them on the spot, then direct them to another way station, then uh-huh. go with them, and it, it's. Obviously, it's not working because we're, I believe, trucks are carrying far too much weight and it's causing a lot of damage to our roads. And I think people understand we're going to have to pay more, yep. but they also want assurances that we're going to protect the roads that we're rebuilding and right. we're going to raise the standards of those construction standards of those roads, the engineering. Well, you brought the weight deal up yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's the most generous in the nation. Yeah. And, you know, if there were a payment of sorts that would come along with that, maybe make it easier to swallow. But the fact is, especially with these stupid lifetime trailer plates, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. we don't <laughs> have an opportunity for a sustainable system for vehicle registration, for for all of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's There are so many elements that are absent from the conversation mm-hmm. that if I were there, I, I wouldn't simply shut down, but I would point to these things and say, come back when you're ready to address those as well. And That's essentially center, what I've done, exactly. as I've said. I've said, we've got to have a conversation where everything's on the table. Yeah. And there's nobody saying, no, we're not going to talk about that. The Chamber of Commerce has said, we're not going to talk about any business taxes. Right. And, yeah. and, and basically, <laughs> they, pulled the, they did pull the plug, at least temporarily. Oh. But now they haven't been able to put together a deal. So they're going to have to come to the table just like everybody else, and they're going to have to be willing to pony up part of the money. So well, I am not going to uh, support anything that if, puts it all on our on our uh, motorists. If they wish it to be bipartisan, because one of the things that I've right. observed, and it's no secret, the legislature today could pass a funding solution for this tomorrow. Yeah. They could put it through well, one chamber, send it to the other, and have the That's what I was going to ask. Are they in a big hurry, the Senate, to r- push this through right away? Well, I think they're getting very cautious because of some <coughs> members having challenges in the primary. Yeah, it's but an election But after the primary year. is over, hold on to your pocketbook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Things there's nothing to – and that's the problem, too, with term limits, uh, mm-hmm. is that once the uh, election is over and their last election is over – they don't feel like they have to listen to the voters. And, yeah. uh, and I've always tried to operate the same way uh, from day one that mm-hmm. I'm up to the last day that I'm there. Yeah, that's and a good I, point. But, but it's not, not the case with everyone. Okay, well, let's hope they hold off for a while, you know. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you know, let's not leave any stones unturned, you know. Absolutely. These, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, uh, departmental grants, IDGs, that right, are, that right. are uh, Skip yeah, the money right up. off the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got to seriously look at that and eliminate as many of those as we can or as much of that. I, I would say it's at least a half a billion dollars. And But I do believe we need more revenue. But we've got to find a creative way and a fair way, as the governor likes to say, <coughs> everyone share the burden or... Uh, and, yeah. and and not yeah, what's his not stick. Line? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what yeah. he usually says. Yeah. Uh, but but anyway, uh, shared sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And we know yeah, how shared don't sacrifice. winners and losers. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and shared sacrifice. He didn't <laughs> he didn't do too well with that. It seemed like we all got it uh, right. when he went through the tax changes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm you're concerned right. though that you know whatever might come about is going to be truly regressive. You can't pile on another, pick a number, 10% worth of I know, tax. I know it. And apply this across the board to everybody. People, you've got young families out there. They're not going to take you've got it. retirees out there that are already experiencing the loss of deductions, Maxed the out. increase yep. of taxes, yep. and this hits them harder than it hits your average I know wage earners. I know well, you know, and, and as I mentioned, started to mention a little while ago, there's some that said in our caucus that said, oh, we won't support a increase in the sales tax, putting that on the ballot and letting the voters decide. But I said, they said, because it's too regressive for the poor. And I said, 
But what do you think happens if the gas prices raise? Right, raise and they can't get 40, to work. They can't get to work <laughs> exactly. for, to support themselves, and everything they buy at the grocery store is jacked up because they increase the transportation. And even though the minimum wage was raised, there goes the minimum wage. Whatever little bit they did gain right. is going to go right in their tank. Right. Yeah, so, so we got, we've got just... one chance to get this right. And probably for the next 10 years. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to support something that's not comprehensive and something that's not good. fair to the motorists. Good, good. I like that. All right, well, looking back over your career, uh, Senator, uh, serving the public, what are some of the highlights that uh, you're most proud of? And do you have any regrets? Help uh, him get his buddy elected in 2006 to fill that, his seat. That's the regret? <laughs> 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 we we had quite some times uh, over the years uh, that first election and and uh, there were those that were trying to prevent him from getting elected and prevent me from getting reelected uh -huh. and uh, we might have to do another show on that because yeah, it yeah. could be it would take well, a couple we, shows yeah, we we can do that <laughs> but but it was uh, and these were people that wanted to keep the status quo they didn't want anyone changing anything or making right, making, making changes to their their little their little playground yeah and uh and so we uh <laughs> you know we we it. actually came in and started uh saying why are we doing this why can't we do this a different way a more efficient way and and i think we both in our respective careers have tried to push that uh as much as we possibly can realizing the circumstances that we're in mm -hmm. but uh i you know i think some of the things that that i feel that i've had an impact on one is Right there, you're yes, probably pretty I, proud of I that. Yes, I did that as hoping you'd remind me. Yeah. Well, it's uh, that's something fairly recent, but it took three mm -hmm. years in the Senate really to get it through. Because that's amazing. Just the politics of the uh, of the legislature. Sometimes, if they um, if you don't sit down and you're not quiet and you don't uh, if you raise any questions or you poke somebody mm -hmm. uh, on the other side of the aisle. Then you don't get anything. You mm -hmm, don't. You don't mm -hmm. get your bills. Doesn't matter how good of public policy it is. Right. And uh, and I poked a few times. Mm -hmm. So it took three years to get this. But <coughs> as of uh, as of the end of last December, the governor signed the bill to create a pink ribbon license plate, mm -hmm. which is a fundraising license plate that all the money will go to breast and cervical cancer That's control awesome. program within the Department of Community Health and helps. Uh, folks all across the state, and I, I used to say uh, helps women across state, but in rare cases, men get breast cancer. It took cancer. three years. Yeah, it took three years, a no-brainer, no uh, a no-brainer, but yeah. the, the plate, and it, they're going to highlight it uh, this weekend at the Race for the Cure, the Coleman Race for Cure down, uh, okay. downtown in Chain Park that's mm -hmm. coming up. Anybody that's interested in going down there, it's going to be it's a tremendous affair. They're moving the location from Comerica Park over right. to uh, Shane Park. Shane Park, yeah. And uh, so uh, they're going to highlight it. Uh, they uh, were big supporters of it. I was able to fundraise the entire amount of money rather than taxpayers not having to pay any money for the setup cost of the license wow. plate. Wow. And uh, was able to raise the $15,000 without costing awesome. anything. Awesome. And so if anyone wants to get them, keep your eyes open. Uh, probably late summer it'll be available. Secretary uh, of State. Yes, yeah, Secretary of State. You should be able to go on their website and yeah, order it. Uh, by the end of uh, end of July or, or or at least the end of August, I think it'll be uh, oh, on the website. Cool. Very cool. Uh, so there's a number of things that I've also felt very proud of. The You know, the Medicaid expansion, mm -hmm. uh, which I was appointed the work group after I started questioning why uh, the majority leader only put Republicans on it. And it, <laughs> it was as though he uh, had already counted that the Democrats were going to be in favor of it. Yeah. But he didn't take into account that some in his party were totally against it. And if they if, if they put a poison pill in the in the legislation, uh -huh. we weren't going to vote for it. You know, if uh -huh. they, and, and some of them wanted to kill it at whatever way they could do it. And some some would have loved to have put a poison pill in there that they could have blown everything up. Mm -hmm. And so myself and Senator Gregory from Southfield, after I raised an issue about it, and some of the press started saying, well, why wouldn't you put Democrats and have it a bipartisan committee? There you go. Uh, they put me on the committee, and last summer when most people were on vacation uh, in the legislature, I was going up for weekly meetings, uh, actually multiple days in a row, mm -hmm. and we worked through a compromise that we were able to get through the Senate, and, uh, and cool. then it went through the House. So some of the things were sort of behind the scenes that I was able to do, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I... 
I've not always been one to stand up and say, I've got to take credit for it. I've got to be able to show that I had uh, that I was the one that did it. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's it takes quiet work behind the scenes yeah. sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lot of people don't hear a lot of stuff that goes on. So in the two terms, you think you accomplished uh, what you wanted to? I mean, There's always things, much? always things like I, I, I have a bill that I... Uh, you know, they've been sort of stonewalling. I actually got it through one committee, the Senate Finance Committee, mm-hmm. and uh, then they re-referred it because they didn't want to have to deal with it, uh, and they re-referred it to the Higher Ed Committee to try to create uh, controversy within the uh, higher ed community. But what the bill would do would uh, allow uh, a tax credit mm-hmm. to uh, graduates of Michigan universities that, and that's public and private, they mm-hmm. could uh, take off as a deduction of, on their taxes, a credit on their taxes, uh, any of their payments towards their student loan. Okay. The purpose behind it is to keep them in Michigan. Right. Uh, and they are only eligible for that credit if they stay in Michigan. Yeah. And, uh, and it's all, going to Chicago or something. Like absolutely. That? Absolutely. It's, it's one of the biggest draws, yeah. uh, of Michigan talent. Yeah. And so we really have what I, what others are referred to as well as myself as the brain drain. We're graduating <laughs> students from all of our universities. We're subsidizing and paying support for our universities, mm-hmm. but on the back end, we're letting them just leave the state when they graduate and we're wow. doing nothing to encourage them to stay here. Of course, we've got to have jobs. That's yeah, number yeah, one. Yeah. But if they have, if they're sitting down and they're looking at their options and they're looking at Chicago, let's face it, Chicago is a greater lure than Detroit is right now, mm-hmm. and it'll probably be that way maybe in our for our lifetimes. Yeah. But you know, Detroit's on the rebound. Mm-hmm. I don't see it happening to be as great of a lure as Chicago. But when they're looking down and they're looking at their options after they graduate, this is a financial component that would be in place yeah, that would say. Incentive. This could mean, you know, uh, up to two thousand dollars a year in in a credit yeah. against your income taxes right. once you're working after you graduate to yeah. get you to stay in Michigan. So we retain the talent here and help build our economy in Michigan. And after all, I mean, Detroit is going to be rebounding. I mean, let's face it. And, and you know, some of those students are going to want to get in on the ground floor, maybe in Detroit, right? Absolutely. And there, uh, there's so many uh, Detroit lofts and other properties now. I mean, Dan Gilbert, just get in with him for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> he's he just announced the other day. I think four or five yeah, new four restaurants. restaurants. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Some and, big name restaurants. And isn't he part of this uh, Blight team, or what's what's he's going? He's part of everything. Yeah, I think I he's committed to uh, to personally to the, contribute to the tearing down of a lot of right. abandoned houses yeah. uh, and a huge amount of money. And, mm-hmm. you know, that guy has really uh, done a lot for Detroit. I'm, I know he's, that's not to he's, say he hasn't done a lot, a, lot, of it up, but a lot for himself. Yes, uh, but, but he... But, but he's turning it back around You're and right. putting it back into the sure. community too. Yeah, and uh, I, you know, hats off to him for absolutely. what he's doing. Oh and, yeah, absolutely. And those there's a lot of investors similar to him, maybe not quite on the scale that he is. There may be some out there that are even larger uh, players that we'll see once this this goes back also to this grand bargain. One of the reasons I did support it too is to get that behind, that chapter behind us, hopefully. Yeah. So these investors will say, "Okay, Detroit's getting on solid footing now. Right. They've got all their creditors quiet now, mm-hmm. and we're moving forward. And now I'm ready to invest. Yeah. And uh, and I think you'll see more of that happening. Right. Right. So any other highlights that you want to mention, or? Uh, I guess, uh, well, cyberbullying legislation. Oh, I, yeah. I've worked on bullying Huge. legislation since I was in the House. Uh, legislation that did finally pass was not mine directly, but a lot of the same elements were mm-hmm. in there that I had uh, pushed for. One of the things they'd left out of that legislation was dealing with cyberbullying. Mm-hmm. And we know social media oh. and is, is as big of a problem Huge. as uh, face-to-face bullying and can destroy children, uh, young students' reputations by what someone reads about them and passes yep. on to someone else. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I've got a bill that I got through committee. It's been sitting on the calendar now in the Senate, and I was able to reach an agreement with the majority leader the other day. He says, I'll run it before we break for the summer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that is... Uh, that would address cyberbullying, and it would also address reporting to the State Board of Education so they can, uh, State Board, or not Board, but the Department of Ed, so they can actually monitor what's happening across the state. Because right now, the reporting mechanism that's in the law right now only says that the school district uh, superintendent has to just report to his board. Uh-huh. So in order to look at 
this information, they'd have to go to every school district and ask them to send them the information. And okay. so this legislation just says two main, two critical things. They have to provide an annual report on mm -hmm. the incidents of bullying without disclosing names or anything, but it would just be aggregate information on the number of incidences of bullying so the state can review those and see if we're making any difference or something else is needed to be done. And it would also encompass electronic forms of bullying. And uh, so... So, okay, uh, maybe you can, without going too deep into this, how how do you prevent cyberbullying? I mean, without going into the the kids' home, you know what I'm saying? And well, I think I think one of how, the issues right now is that electronic means using the computers, and you you'll notice this if you look even at some of the uh, comments that you see and on Detroit news stories and others. People right. will use aliases. Oh, yeah. They'll uh, okay, okay. And 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 there's a certain degree of anonymity hiding that I, behind. Yeah, that that, yeah. Hi, that people hide behind something that doesn't have their name, they feel less responsible. To be honest, they have less right. They feel less responsible as a, as a citizen mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. if they can hide behind an alias. Yeah. And, we have uh, adults that do that. Absolutely. <laughs> I can and, name one. <laughs> well, you can look at sometimes stories on the free press and yeah. the news and the comments that mm -hmm. follow that people will uh, have those aliases, and you'll see the same ones every story that comes along. It's the same people. It's a... It's probably you know a, a few dozen, maybe fifty people right, right. that continually flood those uh, comment lines, mm -hmm. and and young people mimic what they see out of the adults a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, and most times, kids don't automatically know to mistreat each other, but it is something that uh, that has become an yeah, increasing problem, and we need to do something about it. Okay, yeah. That's going to be interesting. That will be a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Don't you uh, think? Richard? Well, I've got I've got the state superintendent of schools is uh, has already uh, endorsed it. On he board. sent a letter. Uh, the uh, uh, all the the MEA that representing all the teachers, the social workers. I've got the state well, board of education. Ninety percent of the battle, right? State there, board of eds in support of it. Awesome. Uh, the governor's even indicated support for doing something about cyberbullying when he signed the original the bill that we have in law right now he said we need to address cyberbullying yeah so it's a serious issue yeah. i mean no doubt lieutenant governor has told me yeah i we we've got to do something about this Good. so we'll we'll see what happens next week but i have assurances we'll get a vote on it next week so any of your ideas that you didn't get in your two terms, you, you think you might pass on to your successor? Well, you know, Richard touched <laughs> on, uh, Commissioner LeBlanc touched on a little while ago uh, something that, that I submitted when I was in the House, and that was the redistricting proposal to create an ind independent redistricting commission. Okay. I, would, I think that could have such a mod monumental change in, in people's respect for those that are <coughs> representing them and people's confidence that their ex people actually have to represent them, right? Because right now districts are so gerrymandered, oh. but uh, that that you have people that yeah. that say, "I've got a safe seat. I've got a safe Democratic seat. I've got a safe Republican seat." Mm. So forget those other people that didn't support me. Mm. And I, my the intent of my proposal was a constitutional amendment to allow voters to decide. To whether to change the constitution, so all districts have to be competitive. They cannot okay. be lopsided Republican, lopsided Democrat. Oh, okay. And uh, so that's that's one thing. Uh, changes to the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association is another thing. Mm -hmm. I've had legislation since I was in the House to try to open that process up. When insurance companies jack up our rates on on our MCCA uh, assessment that we get a notice of every year, and it usually happens in July, <laughs> this year they've decided not to make any increase in it. Okay. And I think it's simply because they're reacting to the pressure that's on them right now. Uh -huh. And uh, But they uh, they have constantly uh, jacked up the rate. I don't know what it started at. Richard, do you remember? It was probably started at about $50. Actually, I think it was less than that, and there was, of course, one year when we got a rebate, and really, you know, and it's <laughs> gone up and down. But at the at central to all of it is that it happens behind a closed door, with mm. folks who have no responsibility to any of us, and not legally. subject to the Open Meetings Act, which oh, my bill would wow. make it uh, right. subject to that. No transparency. FOIA. There. there is absolutely no transparency. It's not, the worst. Not wow. even to the governor, by not the way. Good. Right. Not good. Even even the insurance commissioner gets to observe, but he has no vote, 
and he can't Im- <laughs> he can't influence the decision that's made. Oh my God! So we don't know why it's one hundred seventy one dollars this year, and maybe next year <laughs> it'll be two hundred forty three. Uh, they don't have to justify it. No, but you might get a rebate. <laughs> well, that was once. That, that was, was once. One time. I think time only since it's been created. That's okay. the one and only time, and wow. that was, I believe, in the late nineties. I think oh, it was wow. around ninety-eight or so before never I see got, that again. Yeah. Well, they uh, they had such an excess amount of funds that when people discovered how much they had yeah. in reserve, uh, the pressure uh, yeah. became more than they could handle, yeah. and they they did yeah. uh, have a rebate. They passed legislation, I think, to force the rebate. And then, of course, the veterans. You've done uh, a lot for the veterans, too. We've, so. uh, we've done quite a bit. I, one of the things that I did is I had a, a bill that would uh, our disabled veterans uh, mm-hmm. would be able to, would, the communities currently didn't, or before my bill, and which wound up being sort of swapped out by a legislator <coughs> from uh, the Grand Rapids area. Uh, and uh, but, but basically it was the same bill that I had that said that a community would have the ability to not uh, charge property taxes, to waive the property taxes oh, for a disabled yeah. veteran. Right. Current Before that, the state would say uh, a community, you have the ability to, to collect X number of dollars in taxes from property taxes. And if you don't do that, we'll penalize you. Hmm. And so this took that out of the equation to give the local communities the option. It did not force them. But now the, the bill that actually passed requires them to do it. And, oh. uh, and I, I left it as a permissive bill because I thought that it's sometimes damaging for the legislature to look at everything and have one cookie-cutter approach across the state. Yeah. And, and you may have one community that has a large population as disabled veterans. Mm-hmm. We just didn't know. And, uh, and, and one of the things that I wanted to do is let the communities decide for themselves without any penalty from the state. Okay, cool. And so that's law uh, currently, and uh, it has been, uh, it, it's, it's going to, uh, that as well as, I, I mean, I guess the greatest compliment I felt I have uh, ever received from the veterans is uh, we have annually, we have a Memorial Day ceremony for yeah. our veterans. And yeah. uh, and I had one tell me, he says, we're going to miss you. He says, you've oh. done a lot for us veterans. Wow. And I said, why that, you know, it's hard that to makes accept. makes you feel good. And it, it's hard to accept that when I consider what they've given to me. Yeah, you know, yeah, I know. And, and, and but, it's. But, but you've I, served, you know. Well, I, I appreciate they, it. They, yeah. And I'm not. I, I don't I don't put my service anywhere near in the in the same level <coughs> or same capacity as what they've done. Yeah. And so yeah, I, I that's why I, I guess I've still got a, a high degree of humility in that area. Sir. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big deal. One of the one of the other things, if I could, one yeah, last thing. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we uh, Richard and I, when he was in the uh, the house, we uh, we introduced a bill uh, to stop ticket quotas. Uh, oh, okay. And police departments around the state, <laughs> they would deny that they had ticket quotas. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, you know, and, but, it, but some way, miraculously, some departments, as they approach the end of the month, yes. the tickets, you would see more police officers on the street. Well, it was always tickets. rumored that there yeah. was quotas. And we found that there were. And, oh, okay. and we're not going to name communities. Okay. But, but we... But you know, uh, we certainly found that there were the police officers themselves were telling us uh-huh. the first interview that or the conversation that I had before I introduced the bill uh, was was a local police officer, not here in Garden City, uh-huh. that specifically said that if they had, were on a medical leave and they would come back towards the end of the month, they would have to make up for the same number of tickets Ooh. that they had written. And they called them something else. We won't Ooh. say what it was because they'd give away what the <laughs> wow. city was. Yeah. Uh, that they'd have to make up for the ones they didn't write when they were on medical leave. Is they could be right? on a, a medical leave or maternity, you know, with their wife or family oh my leave. Gosh. And uh, so it was happening. So we introduced legislation to stop it. Uh, and uh, we were fortunate to be able to get it through. I think that was the year that we both received a Legislator of the Year Award from right. the Police Officers Association oh, okay. of Michigan because they didn't have that hanging on their head, over their head. Uh-huh. I had one police officer that said they had to give an 80-plus-year-old 80, 80 man a ticket who oh. w- wet his pants. He was a veteran. 
on oh, top no. of it, that he had to stop him, and, and he would have, on his own discretion, would have given him a warning and let him go. And he said, because of the quota that I was working under, that. I had to do it. And, oh and he gosh. was he was disgusted about it. And and uh, so it, it's wow. I think it was a good good bill. Uh, we've had the first year or so some complaints from uh, one particular community, one former chief. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, I think every everything's smoothed out now and we don't have them. I mean, uh, it's illegal for them to have quotas. Right. Now they just have speed traps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you a real good one where everyone's at. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get your thoughts on this year's uh, elections. Uh, let's turn to that. I'm sure there's a few that really stand out and uh, of interest to you. Uh, you care to share any of those with us that you're going to be watching other than the one well, for I, your seat? Yeah, there's uh, there are a number of seats uh, it's uh, we're in the Michigan Senate uh, Democrats are down to 12 members versus 26 Republicans Ooh. so sometimes when people ask uh, why can't you do this or you can't do that and right. one of the problems is you can find sometimes a handful of members that will work with you on certain things but they they have a great deal of discipline as Richard would tell you from uh -huh. being in the house mm -hmm. that they have a great deal of discipline basically when the leader says everybody's going this way they all go that way right and it doesn't matter how good the issue is so but it, but it is currently we have <laughs> like i said the margin is so large mm -hmm. uh, that it's going to take probably a couple possibly even three uh, election cycles before we could actually turn that around and get a more balanced uh, mm -hmm. number on both sides of the aisle. Either, I personally think it's good for the public uh, to have a closer margin, whether right. it be because one party controlling everything is a bad idea. It right. really is. Exactly. Uh, and uh, because there's no one to provide checks on the other side. Yeah, you need more of a level playing field, let's yeah. face it. I've, I've talked to <laughs> so many legislators that were there in the 80s in the House when they had shared power. They had, they had exactly the number of Democrats that they had Republicans. They had 55 on each side. Oh. And uh, they had to share the gavel. <laughs> and and they said more got done, more bipartisan work got done at that yeah. time because they knew when that. they handed the gavel over to the other side when it was their turn <laughs> that they were they were in for retribution mm -hmm. if they did something that was too crazy. Yeah, competition's and, good, eh? Yeah, yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, are there any any elections that you're really keeping an eye on? I mean, I, what do you what do you like? Well, you know, it, it's going. I mean. I obviously have my preferences of, uh, in the U.S. Senate race. I, I guess nothing became, uh, nothing has been more clear than what I saw uh, surrounding the Mackinac Island Conference mm -hmm. and the between the U.S. Senate race and mm -hmm. Gary Peters, who I, I've known. Gary actually came down and knocked doors for me when I first ran for the legislature. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is, uh, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a veteran himself. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's just, he's been lottery commissioner, U, uh, Michigan Senator. Uh, he's, I believe he might've even served in the house before mm -hmm. in the state Senate, but he's, uh, he's a phenomenal candidate and it just showed how much, how much further ahead he was than, uh, Terry Lynn land. And oh, yeah. uh, she really, she got, at, to a point that she just panicked and she was like waving the, the <laughs> reporters away. I yeah, can't handle. I this. read that. I couldn't yeah. believe it. And uh, and I, I I think I think he'll win because people will see the difference there and the quality and of the candidates and his knowledge. Um, Secretary of State. Um, it, that remains to be seen. What we're going to see as a candidate. I right, heard right. some names thrown out there, but uh, we've got a good Attorney General candidate, uh, Mark Totten. Uh, he's uh, he's a good candidate. We also, uh, of course, Mark Shower running against the governor, uh, and that's going to be a going to be a challenge. That's going to be a real tough yeah. one there. Where real are you tough. at, District Twelve? What are your thoughts there, Commission? Oh, Commission. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Talk about new blood. What no, about no, what about Wayne I County think, exec? Yeah, that that's, that's going to be interesting. That race. That uh, I I didn't see the numbers in the poll, but I understand it was sort of a blow away. Well, we've been joined. By, I heard by, Evans was. What's that? Yeah, I didn't realize there was a new. There poll. was a poll that was just published. I think today's came, paper ah, it came out, okay. and and I think it was a Quinlan poll, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Highly and, regarded. But there was only I think 400. Uh, 
uh, respondents. Uh, 400, okay. uh, the sample survey was only 400 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that's not a very large sampling for something like that. I, I would say if they had 800 to 1,000, then I would think there'd be more, more weight given to a poll like that. But uh, it had Evans number one by far. I, see. And, uh, I, I heard that this morning, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, and, and then I think Weil was number two, and how they sh shook out after that, I think it was Kavanaugh and, and uh, McNamara close to each other, and then pulling up the back end was uh, Fakano. Yeah, wow. Tim Cumbin, I think. Who'd have guessed? I've heard many, <laughs> I've heard many think that he's going to stay about there or be surprised if he breaks double digits. Yeah. By the but, way, we've been joined by State Representative David Kinesic. I just wanted to let everybody know. Is that on? Yes, that's on. You can wave. <laughs> I don't like that thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you do. can't pick his nose anymore. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. <laughs> so what about endorsements? Let's talk about that. I know you've endorsed David. I have. <laughs> yes, I I have. Like, yes, I have. I absolutely you have. Care, you care to share yeah. any other ones with us or well, at this time or I, no? I, I, there's, there's a lot of races where I have a number of friends that are in the races. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. uh, people that I've known for many, many years that have been supportive of me, and I've tried not to, uh, you know, because I think uh, in some of those situations there's good people on both in both campaigns. Right. And uh, so... I'm trying, it's at tough. least at this point, not to <laughs> not to get in the middle of those and mm -hmm. lose friends over it. But yeah. uh, but there's that's an easy one uh, for for state senate. Uh, David will make a great state senator. Yeah, and, we think uh, so too. Yeah, <laughs> so bring me that, a sign. Oh, it's in my yeah the truck of my car. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll make it the first sign we put up this campaign. All right, I'm fine with that. Tomorrow All right, Sunday. there you go. Yeah. Anyone else, uh, senator? Well, we'll, I, I guess, see as we go along. Okay. I'm, I'm certainly endorsing. Oh, good political answer. <laughs> yes. we, we, I'll, I'll certainly be endorsing uh, Mark Totten. Uh, I don't believe in what uh, what the Attorney General has been doing. He he takes very partisan positions and uses our tax dollars to push those very mm -hmm. partisan positions, which I believe are out of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, I really do believe most people would be alarmed at how much of our tax dollars are being used to promote his own personal philosophy and those of the most conservative in the Republican Party. Mm. And uh, and I don't think that's the, really the role of the Attorney General. He mm -hmm. should be defending Michigan. He should be uh, working to for consumer issues like our eternal general did uh, yeah. when he was uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Frank Kelly was yeah. was oh. well known for that and uh, <laughs> he really fought for the consumers in Michigan yes, he and, did. and uh, you know I, I big I, consumer advocate yeah. and and I just I, I believe that mm -hmm. should be the greater role in the, those that are gouging our citizens mm -hmm. rather than going off on these tangents on on uh, right-wing issues right. and using our tax dollars. Another issue that I've always had in, uh, with him and, and even predecessors of his, mm -hmm. I've always disagreed with them being able to negotiate settlements uh, when there's a lawsuit filed mm -hmm. against a company or whatever and give you a, point of, uh, in, in ex a good example, Verizon, uh, mm. gouging people over their long distance rates. Mm. He negotiated to get gift cards, uh, calling cards, yeah. and then he was able to go out to the press and say, I'm going to donate these to our troops. Well, no one can argue giving them to our troops. Right, right. Yeah, but who's going to say anything? That's not his property to give away. Right. That's go through. Things should go through the appropriations process, and and yeah. we should not allow that. Give him the latitude right. that he negotiates to get items that he can give away for political reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. You agree with that, David? I agree with everything the senator said. <laughs> <laughs> and he even said You're that after I told him <laughs> I'd endorse him. Even before yeah. you, you came here, you agreed with him. Before, yeah. Before right when arrived. I walked in the door. Right. Well, Senator, I know after serving uh, the public in public office f for as long as you have, uh, it's hard to walk away from it. It's in your blood, so to speak. Do you have any further plans that you'd like to share with us uh, tonight? Well, I don't have anything. And, and you know, we do have a lot of breaking news on this show, I want you to know. So if you want, <laughs> you want to share anything, well, let's go ahead. He's creating Westland Community Chat. <laughs> oh, now that's breaking news. Ooh, competition. 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 Wow. I, uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I don't I'll know. I'll help you. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes down. <laughs> okay. How it comes down in the, uh, in the next six months or so. But, but take thanks. some time off and... Well, it, I'm, I'm not planning on really bit. taking a lot of time off. I, I, I joke about it, but I'm pretty serious. My wife has a hell of a long uh, to-do oh, list. Honey do, honey do. And I'd rather find some things that I'd enjoy doing. 
<laughs> Poor Gail. Well, look, no matter what you do, uh, what you decide, we wish you and your family all the best, and uh, please come back anytime. And how about after the election, you come back and we'll discuss the results? Sure. Sound sure. good? Yep, be happy right. to. Thank you, sir. All I the pundits it. sitting around the table here could come back. And <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, David, what do you got? Anything? Today? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing much today. Not much? Nothing much today. Knocking doors or anything? Or where today, were you? Today, well, uh, we went a little bit later than expected today. And then I uh, had to come back into town, bounced around to a couple events, and now I'm here. Cool. I still got the suit on today. I see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't look comfortable to me. I'm very comfortable. Are you? I hate wearing suits. <laughs> Honest to gosh. I don't think I, I don't even own a suit or tie. I mean, it's ridiculous. I, I, it's I a joke. before I came over, mm-hmm. took my suit yeah, off. Yeah, casual, it's... baby. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, Richard, let's move on to you. I know you had a few things that you wanted to talk about. Indeed, I do. So... <laughs> I guess I'm going to start by talking about some of the things that have happened over the course of the past week or so, Mm -hmm. two weeks maybe, uh, within the county. A lot of it involves transportation or transit. Mm -hmm. So without my support, uh, last week the commission allowed or authorized uh, Wayne County residents to be able to vote in the August primary election for a smart millage. Yeah. And uh, just so that the listening audience knows, there were a few reasons that I elected to not support that request. I'll start by saying it triples the existing millage. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's crazy, first of all. Uh, So tripling the existing millage in an August primary election, we know that August elections don't receive the same voter turnout. And rather than argue about why that is, we should just acknowledge it exists. And why would we not want to take something that triples a current tax and place it before the majority of the voters? Hmm. So I voted against it in part because of that. Uh, Secondly, Senator Anderson and I, when we were uh, both in the legislature at that time in 2011, 2011, Mm -hmm. SMART initiated pretty significant cuts to its roots, Mm -hmm. including those in Westland Garden City this area, I mean, I, I still remember when he walked over and asked me if I had heard about it. And at that moment, I actually hadn't. He was the one that broke it to me. Wow. And then uh, together but separately uh, in terms of the physical meetings, mm-hmm. we went to the folks at SMART and told them how much we disapproved of that. We tried to talk them out of those ridiculous decisions and on and on and on. When it came right down to it, they eliminated all these routes. Mm-hmm. And what's happened since then is that Businesses have adjusted because less people made it to their business. Workers have adjusted. They had to find another way to get to work. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, things adjusted in a very negative way, in my opinion. But these are the same folks that they're now going to go back to and say, support tripling the existing millage. Wow. With no guarantees. No guarantees as to what might happen a couple years down the road from now. And I was just so irritated. And during our committee hearing, I really let them have it with all of this. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't disrespectful, but I had all my ammo packed. (laughs) And, you know, those service cuts were pretty irritating. When you combine some of that stuff, again, with the August election, with the fact that it's duplicative service, we have D.Dot and Smart competing for the same customers. Yeah. uh, I just think it's insane. And, you know, for 40 years, there's been talk about consolidation and merging and Trying to make it better for the rider, for the customer. Yeah. Forget the politicians and forget you know all the rest of it. <laughs> make it better for the customer, and we are not there. We're just not there. Senator. You know, one of the things that uh, that I recall, uh, I believe it might have been testimony before uh, the commission, that uh, John Hertel <laughs> said uh, was that they would never uh, combine with DTOT. Yeah. And for him to <laughs> say that, and I mean, so in other words, yeah. he believes that it's fine uh, to continue having two competing systems in Detroit. And they overlap each other in certain areas. They they do. Uh, there crazy. there are differences, <laughs> but but the, before I think voters should support uh, transportation or mass transit, they they need to demand that. Uh, these systems be combined. We smooth out the differences, mm-hmm. and uh, that should be the goal. And right. he's even saying that's not even the goal. Oh, and so, 
I, I, I agree uh, with, the, with the argument that and it's ridiculous to spend the kind of money we're spending mm -hmm. and have duplicative sift systems in place and, exactly. and have a yeah, leader kind of that a no says, and have a leader that of the organization that says, we're not even going to try to merge. And, uh, and, and I, I'm telling and you, what's that, the governor want consolidation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> and I, I mean, there's big differences in the way the two departments run. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about it, but someone but, needs to knock some heads together and say, you go in this room, you work it out and you better come out with something that's realistic. Yeah. That's going to be more efficient use of our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's needed. Uh, mass transit's needed down in southeast Michigan. We need some form of transit around the state, but that's not the way to do it, to continue yeah. having two separate systems. Do you want to comment on that? I mean, just from the transit perspective in general, I mean, uh, the commissioner's points are well received about, you know, going to the polls in August and trying to ask for, you know, this, this millage that's three times the current level. But, again, to the center's point, we do – need a system i don't think it necessarily means we need that system mm -hmm. or a system with that expense but if you look at all the other major cities across the country right now and you look at detroit it's one of the biggest things that we are lacking yeah. compared to the others and yeah. so you know it's more than just the transportation of people it's transportation of goods and ideas and and commerce and what have you yeah, it so, takes in a lot yeah and so again you know we're just not there yet and, and i'm sort of uh in agreement with the, co the commissioner that you know, that's not necessarily going to be the right plan for us at, at this time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be working against it as we get closer to that election. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to be bashful about it. And in part, I think that perhaps if we say no, it'll force folks back to the table mm -hmm. to make yeah. necessary adjustments. And I'm just, yeah, that's what I has think to it's happen. Uh, ridiculous to ask us to triple the millage that we're currently paying now. Jesus. No way. <laughs> so... Moving on, uh, one of the other things that just <laughs> happened today, actually, um, involved the M1 rail project. Yeah. And I voted no. I was outspoken during committee on Tuesday, two days ago, as to my reasons why. But get this. So the state <laughs> has a road named Woodward. Yeah. Formerly, it's known as M1, but it's a state highway. It's a state road. It mm -hmm. belongs to the state. Mm -hmm. The county is going to contribute three million county dollars, county road dollars, that could otherwise be used for mm. fill in the blank, county road dollars for this project. Now, this project, uh, one of the things that it does that I, I just find very objectionable is that it'll be the third system on Woodward. We have D dot. We just talked about Smart. Yeah. For 3.2 miles of Woodward, we're going to have three systems. And I just learned today that this project doesn't have direct connectivity with either of the other two. In other words, the stops are not aligned, which is just crazy. Oh, my God. It takes a lane of traffic. So today where there are three lanes, yeah. there's going to be two. No vehicular traffic where this Whoa. project is proposed to be sited, and it's on both sides of Woodward. So this isn't just one set. It's on both sides. I There are so many reasons not mm. to support a 3.2-mile, $140 million project using county money on a state road when that county money could be used Yes, on Cherry Hill. Oh, I agree. For example. Oh, Cherry Hill's are getting atrocious. Uh, well, pick any county road. Yeah. And well, the vote was ten to five. That's all I can ten, tell you. Ten to five passed. It passed. Yeah. I I think uh, I believe they're really trying to make sure they take advantage of federal dollars that are coming in for the project. But I I don't I don't believe that is probably the best uh, best use of the dollars. Even right. though I mean, if they try to hand you money, the feds and say. We, you know, you've got to find something to spend it on. You, you at least ought to do the due diligence to spending on something that's really going to be beneficial right. to the people that right. you're trying to serve. Right? Roads. It's not a 24-hour operation either, just so <laughs> yeah. that you know. This is going to be without What's that going to do to the Dream Cruise? It's going to be, it's not in the same area. <laughs> okay, This is good. new center to downtown. <laughs> yeah. But it's not even going to be 24-hour. It does bisect the people mover. So in that area, we're going to have four Oh different publicly funded but not publicly funded 100 percent i mean uh let me let me rephrase that they can't exist on fair at the fair box so they're not user funded at 100 percent, and they're they're never going to be um, but four systems at certain points along woodward 
I, I just, I don't get it. I Jesus. really don't. So uh, mm. lastly, regarding transit, one of the things I'd like to point out, because I also mm. brought it up, was that when the RTA was passed without my support in 2012 in the state legislature, December of 2012, one of the things that they are charged with is to oversee but not consolidate. It's actually specifically written the other transit entities within the region. Uh -huh. They will be coming to us in 2016 mm -hmm. with a voter initiative. It'll be in the general election. Mm -hmm. It'll be either to increase registration fees, an actual millage, or something else, or a combination of items to support the RTA. Now, the RTA itself actually won't even have a bus, which is kind of weird. So <laughs> we're going to be paying all of these multiple millages for things that overlap and are duplicative within a very small geographic area. And I just, I, I'm really trying to get my head around it. And I did put it that way in front of everybody. I said, explain to me how all of this or any of this is going to be a catalyst for development because that's how it's being sold. When the three systems that are there now aren't, how is this going to be different? And there was no answer. So Jeez. that's some of the stuff that's happening in the county. I guess I'll just conclude by saying on June 12th at 10 well, o'clock. fired up, isn't he? June 12th at <laughs> 10 like o'clock. We like this. Actually. I love it. There's yes. going to be a <laughs> lengthy conversation between administrative folks, between the uh, Wayne County Building Authority, between the county commission, downtown and commission chambers involving the jail. Oh, boy. So the 180-day review period has expired. Yeah. And so they're going to all lock you in there and Well, it's going to be an open out. public Boxing meeting. Gloves. Okay. And when is this now? This is June 12th at 10 o'clock downtown. 12th. Okay. And if anybody Wanna needs go? help with any of that, call <laughs> no. our office. <laughs> no. But, uh, you know, we will, I expect at that time, see the options that are to be made known by the administrative folks and mm -hmm. see what happens. And along those lines, I did have somebody post on my Facebook page this evening that said somebody told them that everything's going to work out with the jail. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to work out with the jail. When it's all said and done, we will not have lost any money. Is that true or false? And I responded, that's false. false. It's absolutely false. Are you kidding the commissioner me? that's running? Pardon me? Is that the commissioner that told him that that's running? I, I, you know, county, I don't know. I don't county know. exec? <laughs> I'm not sure who it was that said it. I need to ask that question. But yeah, you do. to make no mistake about it, we are not quite at $170 million into that project right now. Jesus. And any way that you look at it, there will be at least multiple tens of millions of dollars that will have evaporated. And still $30,000 a month to secure it, right? Isn't that what it was? I thought it was 30 it, a week. Or a week. Maybe it's a week. 30 a week. Yeah. So, um, and oh I, I could be wrong on that, but th there is a significant no, is amount a of money being spent to, you know, keep the site secure at this point. And what about the cement modules? Are they still sitting around? Where are they at? <sighs> I guess the I'm just going to say it depends on <laughs> who you talk to and what day. sick again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, have I'm I mentioned sorry. to you how pleased Should... I am that I did not support that project? I wasn't there at the time. Yes, I know. Wow. You have. It is just Tell an us. absolute mess. It is. It's a mess. And so I believe that wow. commissioners and the public alike <laughs> should be um, looking forward to what we're going to hear regarding the resolution of this yeah, situation. Absolutely. So that's what I have for my report. So that's it, eh? For now. That's enough. Thank you. You were fired up, definitely. David, what do you got? Anything else you want to share with us? No, or I Senator? Do not. Have we done any sort of presentation? We haven't, because you know we're getting ready to conclude this uh, <laughs> chat session. Yeah. But there is something that the Senator, the Representative, and the Commissioner would wish to do. Okay. You can take the lead. Actually, right. I'm not. Aged before beauty. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna cede authority to the higher powers. Well, he is. Yeah, he does outrank all of us. Uh oh. He What's does that? Outrank all of us. Come on, turn around and get it. Let me oh, grab it. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. <clears throat> Let me put these back on. Oh boy. Hey, more stuff for my wall of shame, man. There you man. go. You get rid of all those letters up there. I love it. I <laughs> oh, love you it. better not get rid of those letters. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> hey, these two from Richard. <laughs> now I, I will share a you quick story. And this this is on camera, right? yeah. Oh, so yeah. these frames, yes. you can see. Awesome. Here, here you go. You can see the monitor here. Oh, we can see, yeah. it see it? There you go. Awesome. Wow, that's so sweet. So what uh, the senator and the commissioner and I uh, wanted to do is just provide you with a little token of, of our appreciation and our respect and admiration for what you do here at Garden City Community Chat. Mm. I will tell a brief story, very, very brief, about this <laughs> tribute. We had wanted to do it to surprise Carrie and quickly realized that we wouldn't be able to get all the data and information we wanted to do without, to put in it right. without talking to Carrie. <laughs> and so I said, well, you know, this, this is going to come from the senator and I, Carrie, if you would like... I would be more than happy to reach out to the governor's office and get the governor to sign it as well. I noticed that. And you will, oh, see, you will see on this tribute there is no signature from the governor. Well, now, oh, wait a second. On I mine, love it. We didn't ask. I made an assumption. <laughs> oh, I and didn't know so, you were going to tell that story. Oh, but that's and okay. So, uh, and, and, that's all right. So I, I won't read the whole thing because it take a while. But uh, it's it's a tribute from enough, uh, to, enough to run another program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's it's a tribute from the senator and I. Uh, well, thank you uh, very much. Yeah, thanking you for everything you've done for the community by way of the community <laughs> chat and keeping everybody connected and tied in. And, and again, you don't really see the sense of community, you know, in other places across uh, the district, and, and certainly don't have a medium like this that, that tries to bring people together in that way. So well, thank you. We Appreciate simply say that. thank you. We say thank you. Keep Providing the, good the information that you provide, and you know, uh, in depth. The forum. I mean, it's a forum issues. for you guys, for anyone, yeah. the residents, and, businesses, and it and it provides a service to the public to be able to hear the inside story on a number of things that right. are going on around yep. them instead and of rumors. Exactly, yeah. and and also keeping them posted on what's going on in the community. Well, so thanks. it's. You can have cities and you can have townships, but you make it a community <laughs> and people like yourself, really, that make it a community, Thank not, you. not just a city. Yeah, we try to, for sure. And I have to share this with uh, my co-hosts, too, Richard and, and Tom and, and Derek and all of them, too, because without them, it wouldn't be, you know, a show either, so. And the listeners. And as for this one, I made sure that we got all these big shots of names on here. Okay, cool. I made sure we did that. Then I went out and I chopped the black walnut tree down to make the frame. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You know, That's we're, awesome. We're pleased to be a part of it. And uh, like the senator and representative, hope you find a suitable place for it without remove every, anything from that wall oh no we'll find <laughs> we'll find some some great spots for those absolutely yeah, yeah, i just wish cheryl was here to take pictures i have no well, she's to take mentioned pictures. on here and i'm sure she's in yours as oh, well she's in but there. we got it on video so we're good yeah absolutely. if there's maybe Thank a family you, if there's maybe a family <laughs> portrait you could take that off the wall and put put this in this place <laughs> right yeah. i think there that would go. go over that would go over very well yeah and as i've said to a number of people when i make these presentations <laughs> You know what? Once I leave, if you throw the resolution away, at least it's a great frame. That is an awesome frame. Both yeah, of them. Very like I nice. said, no we county. know who's got the money. It's the county, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they have the jail. Hey, speaking of that, you guys did run into some extra money, didn't you? Like $66 million or something, I heard. Oh. Remember I'm, that? I am glad that you brought that up. So yeah. let's talk about that yeah. next week. Yeah. Okay. All it's right. It's actually Write that down in your notes. tax revolving fund. Yeah. The treasurer. And now we don't know what the, we're going to do with that money, right? Or well, we you? know what we're doing with that money. Oh, yes, okay. It's already debt. earmarked. We're paying down debt. We're not spending okay. it. But yeah, well, that makes we sense. can talk about that next week, and I appreciate you bringing that up. All right. It was Absolutely. in a drawer. In a drawer on someone's desk. <laughs> yeah, it was in a drawer. How the heck? It's actually $150 million. Ooh. Two drawers. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah a lot two, of money. Two big drawers. Two drawers yeah. <laughs> a lot of money, and it puts a pretty significant ding in the accumulated deficit. Wow. Well, that's cool. I'm sure you have a few members of the commission that would love to spend it, right? They'd have some way to, <laughs> knowing, knowing some of the members, as I do. I think your assessment is spot on, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate that, uh, gentlemen. I really, uh, I'm very humble, to be honest. I, uh, like I said, I got to share it with everybody. Um, anything else you wanted to mention? We're good here. Done. You good? You good? Done. I know you'll have another show next week to plug yeah. the uh, relay that Garden City. Oh yeah, having. absolutely. Yeah, but uh, I guess it's not too early to mention it. It's coming up not this weekend, but the following June weekend, June fourteenth and fifteenth. And yep. I know you've had a young man that's uh, on the program, uh, Nick Painter. He does this incredible Isn't job. He awesome. I mean, he's a he's the neatest kid, one of the neatest kids I've ever met. I and said so. So how many how many members are on your team, Nick? Well, let's see. Two or three, two. I think. Two, yeah. Him and his mom. Him and his mom. Yeah, he I mean, came. That's... 
I got to tell you a quick story. A couple of years back, his uh, mom uh, had bit, had uh, yeah, Jennifer had bid on a uh, at the Founders Day dinner, uh, day at the Capitol that I do a donate and and oh, okay. you know it'll usually bring. I mean, I've had them bring as uh, high as a hundred bucks and oh. usually throw in a flag and some other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, she won it and brought Nick up to the Capitol as quick as he got in the door. He asked for a donation for relay. <laughs> <laughs> So and did he go around? He was a salesman. Did oh, he yeah. go around collecting all the pop bottles yeah. too? Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God! Don't set a pop bottle down. It's gone. <laughs> I'm telling you, that kid. Yeah, he is, did it here when he was in the studio. Yeah, he yeah, did it here. I think he raised what the last year uh, over eight thousand dollars, yep. I yep. believe. Yeah. And that's Incredible. phenomenal for a kid that yep. at that time I think he was eleven. And he's something. well on his way again. I, I know he had uh, some great uh, uh, contributions from the UAW. Mm -hmm. They did it here as a surprise. He didn't know about it. And yeah. Kerry, I know that you know this is Garden City oriented, but yeah. This weekend, yes, uh -huh. Saturday morning, 10 a.m., at Wood Park in the city of Wayne, right. the Wayne Westland Relay for Life will oh, kick off okay. its 24-hour event. So for those who wish to see how it's done in an adjacent town, yeah, consider stopping by. Don't have to spend any money. And where is that end. located, Atwood? Atwood is at Howe. Okay. And South of Annapolis. Yeah. Okay. How about Annapolis? Okay. If you get to that intersection where the where the recreation center is, right, right. it's sort of behind it, if I can say it that way. Okay. Very easy to find. But how about right. Annapolis? Generally. Okay. Ten o'clock this Saturday. Ten o'clock Saturday, twenty four hours. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, even though it says Garden City Community Chat, you know yeah, we right. we, That's we why promote all communities. Yeah. So it's what it's all about. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And thank you. Uh, I know you probably want to run, uh, Senator, thank and you. I, I really appreciate you coming. And like I said, after the election, we'll we'll do it again, huh? All right. Sounds good. We'll talk about yeah. what's going on. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll be celebrating uh, the uh, victory of uh, Mr. Kinesi. There you go. Oh, absolutely. And Lamar absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You do rough around again. Working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get through this real quick. Uh, grab your pencils and mark these upcoming shows on your calendar. We're pretty busy, Richard, the next few yeah, weeks. I know. Uh, next week, we're going to have representatives uh, Mia Cup and yeah. Lewis Pisker here from the Wayne Metropolitan Action Agency. And then on June 19th, we're going to have Mr. Buddy Shu and his wife Shelby joining us and talking about something very near and dear to them, the <coughs> Tears Foundation. And uh, you, you might recognize his name if it sounds familiar. He is uh, from The Biggest Loser, season 13, when he appeared on there with his brother Ben. And then on June 26th, the president and founder of Providing for Paws, uh, Joanne Dixon, will be here. That is a, uh, a pet rescue, I believe, dog, dog pet rescue. So that would be interesting. And then on July 17th, we just confirmed that Westland William, Mayor William Wilde will be here in studio and we'll see how his campaign is going so that's going to be interesting i looking forward to that and then finally on july 24th dearborn heights uh, councilwoman and state representative candidate lisa hicks clayton will be here to talk about community engagement and uh so that's just a taste of what's ahead uh more to come i'm sure still haven't heard back from uh your friend and my friend uh who's running for state representative julie plawicki hasn't got oh. back with me so, uh, Julie, if you're listening, uh, time's running out and the dates are filling up, so we'd love to have you here. Hope you uh, can get a hold of us soon. Uh, so that's a lot to look forward to, and we hope you'll be a part of uh, this as well. Richard, you did your update. Hey, the next city council meeting uh, for Garden City is Monday, June the 9th at 7 p.m., 6000 Middle Belt Road. The Garden City Garden Club, their garden walk, is having their garden walk on June 21st, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tickets are $8.00 or two for 15, and are on sale now at Barson's Greenhouse uh, at Merriman and Maplewood. And the Garden Club will uh, also be at the DDA Flea Circus, which is gonna be June 14th, go, uh, doing a bake sale, and tickets will be available there too as well. I believe they are still looking for one or two more homes, so if you're interested in showing off all your hard work, or would like to recommend a neighbor, contact Stacy. she's the president, at 734-564-3868. This is their 20th anniversary, so it's a special one, and the first 50 people will receive a free perennial, and they are always looking for new members, too. So if you're interested in gardening or showing your home, give them a call. I love gardening. Yes, I know you do. 
You're leaf actually a leaf member, blowing. I know. He likes leaf blowing. Yes, leaf blowing. Likes <laughs> to get close to him, right? Yes, not too close. <laughs> you know that talking about the flea circus. If I could just enjoy oh, yeah. one thing. That's a fun uh, time. I can't wait to go back and see those high wire fleas going across. Oh and yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, isn't it? That's a real draw. We're waiting isn't it? for you too. <laughs> <laughs> Have your binoculars out too, for sure. <laughs> So, oh, and the Relay for Life of Garden City, uh, Senator, is scheduled for June 14th and 15th at Garden City Middle School, located at 1815 Radcliffe. They'd like you to rally a team together, recruit friends and family members and people from work, and help raise cancer-fighting dollars. For more information, go to relayforlife.org slash gardencitymi or call Abby at 7 or 248-663-3404. And uh, let's see, Kelly at 734-674-7421. Let's see, I did want to mention this real quick. I got a couple flyers here. There's going to be a concert, Americana, 338th Army Band, is going to be at the uh, Wayne Ford Civic League on Wayne Road in Westland, Saturday, July 5th. That's kind of a big deal. uh, I've never heard of this band, but I hear that's a pretty big deal, so... Tickets are available at Westland City Hall and Westland Lock and Key, 35665 Ford Road. The concert is free. Donations are suggested, and that will go towards the Veterans Memorial Garden of Westland. For more information, call 734-716-3432. I know, Carrie, there's a uh, marine band, too, that travels around... Uh, that is phenomenal. I I know really? there's I know one of the there's guys no that's in the band Marine. is yeah. from from Redford okay. and uh, he, oh. he uh, uh, in fact I think Richard you may know his son also Doug he's walked in the Garden City Parade with us uh, a okay. couple of times and uh, but anyway I went my wife and I went to see them in Brighton mm-hmm. last year and boy was that a, what a show that really was really awesome yeah. eh? and uh, if I could mention one last thing and I yes. uh, my, uh, cohorts here might also uh, we have an e-newsletter that okay. folks could go online if they want to see what's happening in the legislature get uh-huh. some updates on on some good things happening in the community they mm-hmm. can subscribe to it by just going to my website okay. and they can just go to senator anderson at senate.mi well actually that's my email address sorry <laughs> it would be uh, uh, senate.mi.gov forward slash Anderson, and you can okay. subscribe to my uh, e-newsletter there. Oh, okay. And it's free, no charge. We put it out every couple of weeks and some good information in there, plus a survey that we do. We ask people what their opinions are on issues that oh, are okay. before the legislature usually. Cool. Absolutely. It's good. Mm-hmm. Keep the people in the know, man. That's what it's all about. Uh, let's see. The Straight Farmhouse, it's a Garden City Historical Museum, is having their flea market again, uh, outdoor flea market. Uh, the second and third Saturday of every month, beginning June through September. The first one will be June 14th. Uh, it's only 15 bucks for a 10 by 10 space. It's payable on the day of the flea market. No advance reservations. The Straight Farmhouse is located at 6221 Merriman Road. And uh, it'll be canceled in, in case of uh, inclement weather. So that's a good deal. Go over there and see my buddy Michael Lawrence. I also have to mem- mention the Summer Heat uh, 2014. Uh, it's a six-week, half-day summer mini-day camp for ages uh, 7 to 11, Monday, July 14th through Thursday, August 21st. Uh, days, Monday through Thursday, time 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And it's located at the Maplewood Center and Garden City Park. The cost is $60 per child. Bring a bag lunch and water bottle daily. So uh, that's kind of a good thing. Uh, you want to keep the kids busy over the summer, right? For more information, call 734-793-1860. And uh, I did mention the Garden City Flea Circus. Uh, that's going to be held June 14th. Boy, a lot of stuff happening June 14th. That's for sure. Mrs. And there, Chat. And there's our photographer. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, look at I you got to get pictures of this man. I got my awards and everything and We're I'm all flustered and down. and for gosh sakes, you got to do that. Oh, all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wish you could see this now they're all fighting over the camera. David first because we're doing alphabetical. Yes. We do all of us. 
Awesome. Back up into the hallway, but not down the stairs. <laughs> yes, don't fall down the stairs. Yeah, don't fall. Can you do it the wide way? Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. You got us all. Yeah, block. <laughs> Yeah. Away. One, two, three. Okay, cool. One more. All right. I'm going to try to get the headphones on the wall that always make it look so professional. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, dear. Glad you made it. That's pretty awesome, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Look at those. What part of the wall are we going to have to go up the curve? I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to come up with something. We already talked about what we're not going to do. Taking a family photo. Fo- <laughs> he yeah. wants a family photo down. Take a family photo down. <laughs> Okay. Well, at least with this one, you got a nice frame that you can do. If you want to replace what's inside, right? (laughs) Throw the resolution away. I have now. You say that jokingly, but I've I've been to different communities right here. We've talked about that, you and I. Where (laughs) where (laughs) they they will just put something right directly over the tribute and just put something else up. Look, let's call them out. (laughs) I'm not calling anybody out. Oh no. I would not call it. So there's, I'll give you two examples. Okay. In the city of Westland, over at the Dorsey <laughs> Center, these presentations were made. Yeah. The next uh-huh. time I went, the frames are gone, and these are stuck with a pin on a, on a wall. <laughs> they, are, they are still there now. No way. Sticking Yours, on, sticking on the combined wall. with oh Kozowski, gosh. and mine separately is just like on a wall. The frames are gone. Are you serious? And in Inkster... In their city hall. Oh no! Just directly over. Directly you over. You can still see the. You can still see the. They have here. something they else. Take it out. They no, didn't, didn't even take it out. Just put something behind it. I want to know oh who's. I want to know what's behind gosh. it. Gosh. Are you on here? Yeah, we're on. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had to cut out the head. She cut the head out and put the right. Wait, <laughs> that's a Seinfeld issue. I swear to God. For episode, I saw that. I swear. Wrap it up. That was a Cheryl issue. Yeah, wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Nice All right. Guys. Well, I think we're ready to call this a podcast, guys. It's a podcast. I want to thank everyone it's that participated in tonight's show. Thank you to State Senator Glenn Anderson for taking the time to stop by and chat with us. Thank, thank you, you, Senator. Thanks for having me. And a big thanks to uh, David Kanisik, who happened to stop by, and my co-host, Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc, and yep. our resident weatherman, Doppler Tom. And thanks to everyone who hung out in the chat room with us. We appreciate your support every week. If you have a show idea or a guest you'd like us to try and get on, just send us an email at gccommunitychat at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to provide that for you. And if you haven't joined our mailing list yet, in the subject line, just type add me to your mailing list and send it to gccommunitychat.com, gccommunitychat at gmail.com. And uh, join us next Thursday, the 12th, for show number 203 already. <laughs> Can you believe it? At 8, a, 8 p.m. right here on TalkShoe.com, show ID 82757, when we welcome in-studio representatives from the Wayne County, Wayne Metropolitan Action Agency, Mia Cup and Louis Pister. Pisker. Uh, should, be, should be a good one, remember? I'll introduce success. it next week. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn lisp. Uh, remember the success of a community depends on the community so please support your local businesses and if you see something say something look out for one another one another out there and on behalf of tom richard this is carrie thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next week good night